This is a very simple review of the X2D. There'll be some sample photos. I'll talk about the camera and show you how I felt when I'm using this camera itself. The X2D is something that I really admire. I mean, the Hasselblad X series is really beautiful. Beautiful camera here. But, you know, due to the technology you need, I always favored the Fujifilm GFX, right? So the question is, is the X2D worth it? Right? Is it worth it? I mean, I'm no stranger to expensive cameras, but to me, is it worth it? And I think if you are a medium format user, you are into image quality, I think this video is definitely for you. Before I start, I'd like to thank Class Distribution for loaning me the X2D. Even though the time is really short, I could only do two photo shoots with it. I enjoyed it, and I'll share with you what's good about it, what's bad about it, and what's not so great about it. Three categories today, rather than, you know, talking endlessly. So what's good about it? Firstly, it's obvious. The size. This is tiny versus the GFX100. I mean, you could compare to the GFX 50S, this is still considered tiny. It fits nicely into this picture, as you can see, into a bag, into a socket of the bag, you know, just a small box compartment with the 45mm P lens, F4. Fits really nicely. So the size is fantastic. The next thing is its build quality. This reminds me of Leica, just for medium format. Very, very well built. Fantastic quality in terms of its build itself. And it is actually really, really nice to hold. The grip is deep and good. And I mean, wherever it needs to be secured, it's secured. Nice camera to hold. It's a bit heavy. I think they could make it a bit lighter, if you ask me. But I think Hasselblad wants that feel of quality like Leica. So it weighs a bit more. <laughs> Still lighter than the GFX50 and GFX100. I believe it's lighter than the GFX100 by I think 5 grams something. But still, it is a smaller camera. That's important. The next thing, before I enter into the most important stuff, is the inbuilt storage. The inbuilt storage is quite fast. I've used it, I transferred with it, and it is very transparent. Unlike you know, the other cameras, when you plug it in, it's detected as some camera stuff there that doesn't work sometimes on Mac. This thing plugs nicely into any computer as a mass storage device. So you could use this camera even without a memory card. And why is that important? When is the last time you forget to bring a memory card? I did. I mean, I did a few times in 10 years of shooting. But with the X2D, you will never forget it because it's built in. And normally we don't do the built in with a cable and that's because it's freaking slow. This is actually really fast. It is really, really fast. So I won't hesitate to use the inbuilt storage in it. And it's one terabyte, it's huge. You're paying one terabyte, man. One terabyte SSD today costs like, I don't know, 200, 300 sing dollars. So you're paying for it. Now, the other thing that is really beautiful and good about it is the screen. The screen is huge. I mean, this is a large screen. Look at this. A beautiful large screen. One of the largest I've ever seen on the camera, in fact. And the top screen is also really beautiful. Now, the most important thing is the image quality. But even then, that is not the most important. But first, let's talk about image quality. Great image quality. I mean, 100 megapixels. I don't need to go any further. Just look at my GFX100 review, my GFX100S review. They are the same sensor, same fidelity. Just the Hasselblad has a different tuning for the colors. And I do enjoy editing their colors. I think their colors are nicer to edit than the Fujifilm if I'm looking for neutral tones. But if I'm looking for something special, I'll say the Fuji does it better. I mean, the color chromes and stuff are very nice baselines for editing. Then, the most important thing is the leaf shutter. But before that, before I go there, the IBIS on this camera does work out very well. It accompanies the 100 megapixel sensor, and therefore you can shoot at 120, 130 with relatively good results. I say as the GFX slightly more stable on that. And that's important to the whole integral part of the 100 megapixels experience. 100 megapixels is going to be very prone to any form of shake. So it's a good thing that the IBS does work on this. But now let's get back to the leaf shutter. The leaf shutter, firstly, 
in concert with the IBIS and 100 megapixel sensor, it reduces the amount of shock in the camera, therefore very dampened and gives you really sharp photos. But the most important part of a leaf shutter is the flash sync. And I could go all night about why flash sync is such a big deal, but in a very, very simple explanation, to overpower the sun with a large modifier, let's say a 1.2 meter umbrella like you see in this photo here, you will need something like an AD1200 for a GFX100 to do that kind of overpowering, to get that very bright forward feel, you know. I mean, you can put your modifier really close, but if you're going to put your modifier, let's say one and a half meters away or two meters away, you need nearly full power or half power of such a big ass flash. But on the X2D, you could do it with the AD300 at one eighth of a power, or one quarter if you put it slightly further away. One quarter of a power on the AD300 versus half power on the AD1002. How much difference is that? Firstly, the lights are already two stops in difference of power. Add on that you need half the amount of power setting in the AD300, you save nearly three stops of power. And that's what I experience if I do a very calculated shoot my push-in shot, as you can see here. The power loss at Optima to 1 over 2000 is about, with the XOD, a 1.35 stop loss of power at full power for the flash. And it goes very deep there, but if you're very interested, write down in the comments below. I will explain a bit more in my next video. But it's a bit deep on why flash sync is not perfect for a leaf shutter at 1 over 2000. But Ignoring that, the GFX, the moment you go over 1 over 200, you are incurring HSS, high-speed sync, in case you didn't know. HSS has an immediate loss of about a stop of power, and then after that, you lose more and more power as you go up. 1 over 2000 will result in a 4 to 5 stop of power loss, versus just 1.35. This pretty much explains why you can use an AD300 at 1 quarter of a power to achieve the same effect as the GFX100 at 1 2000 of a shutter, same. But you have to use something like, I mean, half power or something on the AD1002. Makes a big difference, really. So then, the X2D. If you are into flash photography, I pretty much can stop the video here and you can enjoy it already. Now let's talk about the bed. And it's very obvious is the autofocus. The autofocus on this camera, at least with the 45mm lens here, is bad. It feels like going back to the GFX 50S Mark I, and then I put something like the 63mm lens there, or maybe something like the 80mm 1.7. Really, really slow, really, really jittery, and may not always work in backlit shots. That's my experience with the X2D. Even though the sensor is very modern, the AF system has been upgraded, the AF just don't feel anywhere close to even the GFX100. Now, if you have followed my channel, I use a lot of advanced cameras. I mean, the R3, the A1, the Z9, the X-H2S. This is by far not the worst. I mean, this is just on par with my GFX50S experience. So, take it wherever you want. And then the next thing is, the not so great part is usability in the field. Now, to control the AF point, you could touch screen, use it as a touch pad when you are using the EVF, or press a button and turn the dials. All three of them are just bad because firstly, the touch screen is very inaccurate. For a medium format camera, even at f4, it does mean you can miss focus and kind of tap where you want. The next thing is, well, um, the touchpad thingy, if you are a bit sweaty, it doesn't work. Just bad. A little bit of wet, a little bit of sweat, just to make it work. And the last thing, changing the autofocus point with the front and back down is a bad experience. I mean, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the nearest shop, try the X2D yourself, change the autofocus point with the dials. Terrible experience. That is the first not so great thing about it. I don't think you can do much improvement other than to put a joystick and that will not be in the X2D. However, that said, I have good amount of success using the touchpad edition. 
So as long as you dry your hands properly, dry your screen properly, it will work out. No worse than any of the Fujifilm or even some of the Sony cameras when it comes to touchpad mode. Next thing that's not so great about this camera is the menu system. The menu system is uh, very simple, very little functions, can't get what I want, and very, I would say, as quirky. Uh, the touch system is just not smooth. It doesn't feel as smooth as, say, the Canon R3s or even the GFX. So touching the screen itself is a hit and miss experience. Uh, you can sometimes activate the wrong functions. Just feels not so good. And then there are some things that I really cannot um, work around. Uh, things like finding certain functions in it don't seem to be available. Uh, I mean, I really cannot figure, for example, how to activate the grid here. I'm, I'm not sure whether it's even a grid there inside the system. So that's something to note. But that's really about it. That's the not so great parts. To me, if you are into flash photography, you want the best image quality, and you're willing to spend money for a camera, I'll still recommend you the X2D. I mean, seriously, with the 100 megapixel sensor and the awesome flash mechanism of the leaf shutter in the lenses, you could achieve photos that no other cameras could. You could achieve a photo that there is no cheaper way to achieve it. <laughs> That's what I'll say. No cheaper way to achieve it. Because for a leaf shutter that sinks all the way to 1 over 2000, there is no alternative. There is no alternative. I mean, some people will say use high-speed sync, but high-speed sync is not the same. There is a color cast at times. It is not stable. And also, the power loss is really, really big. You know, it has a lot of power loss. Way more power loss than you ever appreciate power loss. So you have to carry something so much bigger. If you are into flash photography and portraiture, I think this is really the best. You could carry this, as what I show you in this picture. This camera with a 200 watt flash, a trigger, and you are ready for portrait. With a small modifier, maybe. You could actually try bringing two flash in the same bag and still be able to shoulder sling it. You could do things that no other system could do. Every other system would require you to bring way bigger lights, way more expensive stuff. I mean, you do spend a lot of money on a camera, but you save a lot more money on your flash. Because flash is not cheap. Uh, 80,200 is actually expensive and it's heavy. How many can you carry? Two piece? I could carry 380,300s. 380,300s cost the same as 80,002. If I try to carry 380,002, it will cost four, five thousand, four thousand dollars more, and that will pad up the difference with this versus the GFX 100s. So you really need to weigh the pros and cons. If you are just there for landscape, you don't use flash. Unless you really treasure the portability part of it, I'll say the GFX 100 is a better bet. But if you do any form of flash photography, especially portraiture, I think the X2D is beautiful. Absolute beautiful camera. And I'll end this preliminary review of the X2D by saying, if you're a portrait photographer, you are into flash photography, you want to shoot in any condition in the world, and you want to bring flashes out without killing yourself in the process, X2D. Sometimes it's not even about the money. Can you bring 380,200 out? You can't. Can you bring 380,600 out? You probably can't either. But you can definitely bring 380-300s or 380-200s or 3 Westcott FJ 200s out. No problem. And that ends my review. I hope you enjoy this very slow review of the X2D. And I'll see you again. Bye-bye. And there's one perk I want to say. Beautiful, beautiful camera. <laughs>